last three, four, or five years with. And um, I, every time I read it and hear about it and learn, I learn a little bit more. And so it's not something, as I shared with you last time, that you just read about once and then say, okay, hey, I've got it. It's something that you have to incorporate and live with almost every single day. So um, how we started was the idea that IQ plus EQ plus um, positive action is really how you become um, successful with your children and successful with you as parents. And so our idea behind this whole EQ was how to fix it in your life and then how that will help uh, it, it be incorporated with your children. And so I'm going to put someone on the spot who can help me with a definition of, of what you took away from, from this last time. Maybe just in a few words. Anybody feel brave enough? Um, okay. All right. Can you share how do you think your thoughts were from it? It was for me to take home to my children that sense of they can come home from school and they're telling me all about their day and tell me what happened, what they said, what they did. And so my feedback to them was, well, how did that make you feel? Okay. How do you think that person felt? And do you like the way you reacted? If you were to take some time and think about it now, would you have done it differently? Would you have responded to that little boy or girl differently? And it just, for me and my daughters, it helped them to think about not just always reacting, but why they were reacting, and how they could have reacted differently, spoken to someone differently, um, just thinking about it. So I take that home now, and we use that, and maybe it's their preteen uh, attitude, and I'm saying, well, do you really think that speaking to me that way is going to get you the results that you're looking for? And it, it helps me to slow down, and I just have to use those really simple words, and they stop because you aren't engaging them. I'm not yelling, because they all tune us out when you start to do that. And so it, it, it helps me a, a, just a different approach in talking to the folks. Yes? Yeah, I think it would help me that we're going that uh, sounds of books, you know, even how we can children. But your presentation focused on specific, when you talk about these nine ingredients, and really what exact ingredient we need to work on first with ourselves and then with children. One of them was very interesting, we talked about empathy. That when we get mad, when we are sort of frustrated, that how to think about that, well, do I, does empathy, what he's trying to say, what I'm trying to communicate, and stop and step back and say that was very important. Good. So those are all, that's exactly what it's all about, looking at how you feel about things <coughs> and then what your reactions are, how you manage that, and then how your children are feeling about things, and then how they're managing that. So a formal definition for those who are new to this is emotional intelligence involves the ability for accurately appraise and express emotion. The ability to assess and or generate feelings when they facilitate thought, and the ability to understand emotion and emotional knowledge, and the ability to regulate emotions to promote emotional and intellectual growth. The way I like to think about it is that, you know, when we're thinking we're smart about something and you, you use your intelligence of just the, your, your the knowledge you have with um, facts and figures, and you go, oh, I got that problem. And so that's how we answer kind of the everyday intellectual things in the academic world. In the emotional world, you need to apply the intelligence because we're all emotional. <laughs> and so half the time, most of the time, we just are emotional. <laughs> we forget to be emotionally intelligent. And so we have all these interactions with people and we are uh, engaging in conversation and discussion and solving problems that uh, make our emotions rise or you get excited about something and we're not intelligent about it we're just emotional and so what this makes you think about are what are the things you need to do to kind of hone it in to use your minds in an intelligent way to know yourself know others manage yourself manage others and, and put that in motion. And it's something you have to work out at, at, at every single day. So just quickly, because I just told Jennifer we'll be quick today. Um, I don't know, there's these five components I just want to uh, you know, review. So um, knowing yourself, um, and really to do a self-awareness at you know, different times in, your, in the month, in the, in the year, and, uh, you know, and also with different people. I know when certain people come into my office, I have to react a different way. And, 
react because if we react the same way to each child, it isn't going to work. And so I know you all have, you know, different children, different personalities. I know your kids. Um, you've, you've got to think about it intelligently, how you're emotionally going to deal with each other. But you have to start with your own self-awareness and take responsibility, you know, for your feelings. And it's okay if you feel, have feelings, and you're going to have them from anger to excitement and happiness. But just know that you have those and when you have those. And then the second one is manage your emotions. So, you know, don't get so super in a, in a soccer game that you go nuts and your kids are like, oh my gosh. Uh, uh, or that, you, uh, just, that when you're upset about something, as Karen said, she's all of a sudden kind of owns it down and she's like, you know, got that under control. And as I said at the last meeting, these are baby steps. Um, we all don't do this right. And so it's a matter of stepping up. And So for those who were here last time, have you all felt like you've made a little progress in what you've been doing with this? Because then that comes in this whole idea of communicating effectively. You know, you've got to say the right things, and that's where that intelligence part of the emotion comes in. So you're not just blurting out what comes in first in your mind. Um, that's not so intelligent. So, uh, then the fourth one is recognizing and understanding others. And everyone, you can almost tell when people walk in a room, uh, <coughs> not a good day. <coughs> oh, they're so happy. And so, same with your children. You know, they got off, you know, on the wrong side of the bed. So, I think you have to understand that we all are human, and we have the right to have those good days and bad days. Um, so, know others, and then how to manage that, and that is really um, the conflict resolution, cooperation, um, that's also, you know, helping them uh, just be understood. And so, it just keep these five things in mind, and I, I think you'll um, be on the way of, of, of really building your cue. Um, one of the other things that I didn't have as a handout, but it, it's the acronym ITSU, and it's you. And really what it is is I, Identify yours and your child's feelings and the problem, and then see what responsibility is yours, and then what's your child's. So that's I is identify. T is think of your focus, your goals, and how to resolve the situation. Use that thinking to do that. And then S is set out your plan of action, because you should think through what you're going to do. And then U is understand what happened so you can repeat what worked or try something next time do. And so it's, it's you. And it's just identify, think, um, set out a plan, and understand. So those are the things. And that will really help your child grow. And then the last handout I have is on these ingredients. And these are just things to keep in mind. And it's a mindset. And the, um, <coughs> she climbed in a wonderful uh, session earlier this year on the on Carol Dweck's book, Mindset, and I would recommend this book to anyone. And there's so much of what mindset is in uh, relationships to EQ. And um, so these ingredients are, you know, just this idea of compassion and empathy, and, and trying to teach that to your children versus being sensitive. You know, think of what some of these opposites are. Teaching the confidence instead of being kind of sheepish or you know, being confident feeling. I mean, that's one of the things I hear teachers all say, oh, our kids are getting so confident about what they're doing. And then the idea of being curious um, rather than being totally content. Um, because then, it's, again, it's just the idea of keep thinking. There's a part of EQ about noble goals of what you want to achieve and how do you want to set those goals out by really caring and wanting to uh, achieve. And then intentionality, um, effective action, have a plan that you, this isn't something that just kind of happens, you have to have a intentionality. And then the self-control, which we kind of talked about, relatedness, so you're understood, and capacity to communicate, which is really the whole key to the whole idea. And, um, and then cooperation, the balance of understanding others, of you know, the needs of others. And then the last one I just want to touch upon, because I think this is extremely important, and that's resilience. And that is the snap back when something um, is kind of negative happens. And I think in today's world, we're always trying to protect our kids so much. And
and a big part of EQ is life is going to happen. And there are going to be things, I always say, there's always some fifth grader that's giving another fifth grader a cookie. I mean, it just happens. They go down the hall and that happens. And, and you got to know how to deal with a nookie. And um, it's just, if they can't, you know, they're going to have trouble. And so it's one of those things that you need to have them understand. And so uh, there are some things to, um, with resilience, because what happens if they don't have resilience, they feel defeated. And then they don't know how to snap back at all. And so you have to help them with some helping words that say, you know, how can you get back to this? What, you know, what is it that would make you feel better uh, if, we, if you tried it again? Sort of what you were talking about, Karen. So I think um, that's one area that I think we could spend more time on in another discussion is really getting to resilience. Because we all make mistakes. We all feel badly about things. But we've got to learn how, with our emotional intelligence, to come back with that. And Dr. Wolcott had the awards assembly earlier this year said sort of the best thing that I think is with resilience is that if you think you can, you can. If you think you can't, you can't. And it's just that simple. And so I think when, when kids get on the can't, they've got to learn the resilience to get back because they'll just stay down. And um, so I want to conclude with, with that in mind and, uh, that there's a great little book here, um, and I've probably <coughs> always been a teacher. I'll read it to you. Be beautiful oops. Oops. A torn piece of paper is just the beginning. Every spill has lots of possibilities. You all see that in the back? Bent paper is something to celebrate. A little drip of paint is your imagination run wild. A scrap of paper can be fun to play with. A smudge and a smear can make magic appear. A stain is potential if you can play with its shape. Holes are worth exploring. When you think you have made a mistake, oops, think of it as an opportunity to make something beautiful. That's what resilience is. So think about that. So just some more food for thought. <laughs>